The Barbados Water Authority gets a U.S. $3.5 million grant from the UAE. That's our top story in our Barbados Today morning news update for Monday, January the 29th. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. The Barbados Water Authority has received a U.S. $3.5 million grant from the United Arab Emirates to fund a renewable energy project. The project is part of the BWA's medium to long term plans to reduce the company's energy bill and increase efficiency of its operations. Signing of the deal will take place today. A national anti-drug plan for Barbados, which was passed some two years ago, will go into operation this year. Manager of the state-run National Council on Substance Abuse, Betty Hunt, informed a recent panel discussion at the Kayfield Wesleyan Church that the plan involves a collaboration between all partners and agencies across the island which engage drug abusers at some level. The NCSA boss is also calling on parents and guardians to educate themselves on the telltale signs of substance use by their children. There are some things that are right in front of us that are being used now, along with the illegal substances, and these are cough syrups that are easily available over the counter. Um, they're mixing them now, they're going and buying them legally and mixing them. They inhale things like paint, like thinners, stuff like that. So that strong smell, if, if for some reason it's not Christmas, you're not sprucing up, all of a sudden this child decides he wants to do X, a, a paint job or something. These things sound silly, but this is how people actually get a high. I recall a couple of years ago, this was an adult though, we got a call from accident and emergency because someone had presented there having told them that they had just come from inhaling horse manure. It's the ammonia from it, see? And had this person in, I mean, a serious, serious situation. Chief Executive Officer of the Barbados Tourism Product Authority, Dr. Kerry Hall, has given the assurance that the South Coast sewage problem has had minimal impact on visitor arrivals here. Dr. Hall told a joint news conference between the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Health at the weekend to respond to the U.S. alert on the quality of this island's drinking water that even with this latest advisory, the majority of visitors booked to come remain on track. People tend to just make the necessary adjustments that they have to make to accommodate their stay here. And especially once um, the issue is addressed from the perspective of you get back to them with what's actually happening with accurate information. You know, I'm not saying that some people have not diverted their stay here, but a lot of people are still coming to the island despite this. Once they are reassured of, 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 of certain things or areas that they can... Um, if it's necessary to shift out and stay. Uh, so yes, so even though there has been some impact, we have done everything possible to keep it to a minimum. The privately owned public transport sector has pledged to keep the pressure on government to meet its myriad demands so operators can provide a better and safer service to commuters. The decision was made during a recent joint committee meeting of the Alliance Owners of Public Transport and the Association of Public Transport Operators at the Barbados Community College. Spokesperson for the Joint Committee, Ingrid King, told Barbados Today the owners at the meeting agreed not to back down from representing members on such outstanding issues as proposals for increased bus fares, duty-free concessions on imported vehicle parts, and speeding up completion of the river terminal facility. We will not be deterred. It's been a long and sometimes very difficult struggle. But I think the calls for rationalizing the entire public service vehicle sector have also gone on for a long time. And there is an obvious need. I mean, there are obvious areas where the commuters are suffering, whether it be in terms of unavail unavailability, whether it's in terms of inconsistency in scheduling. But we definitely have problems that we need to address. And of course, the one that we're not trying to hide from either is the whole issue of the behavior of some people in the public service vehicle industry. 
our response to this is, of course, that we do need the assistance and consistently so of the authorities in stemming that as well. In sports now, Roger Federer has now become the only man to win 40 or more major singles titles as he took the Australian Open tennis crown yesterday. Roger Federer won his sixth title down under in his 20th Grand Slam with victory in the men's singles final at the Australian Open. The Swiss maestro wobbled at times in Melbourne in the face of some fierce resistance from Croatia's Marin Cilic before winning 6-2, 6-7, 6-3, 3-6, 6-1. -6 now 36, Federer becomes only the fourth player and only man to win 20 or more major singles titles. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. The opposition St. Kitts and Nevis Labour Party is looking for a new leader to replace Denzel Douglas. Douglas is currently grappling with the recent announcement by the Attorney General Vincent Byron Jr. that court documents have been filed by the government seeking a declaration by the court regarding the eligibility of Douglas as a parliamentarian whilst being the holder of a passport and a citizen of a foreign country. Douglas was issued with a Dominican diplomatic passport in July 2015. The Attorney General, as well as most legal observers, see this case as a slam dunk for the Team Unity government, as the laws state clearly that an MP cannot be a citizen of a foreign country and serve as an MP. And on the international scene, Spain's constitutional court says Catalonia's exiled pro-independence politician Charles Puigdemont cannot rule the region from abroad. We pick up the story on this latest development in this Euronews report. Catalonia's fugitive former president, Carles Puigdemont, cannot be re-elected without returning to Spain. The country's top court has ruled. Puigdemont fled to Brussels in October and has been in self-imposed exile ever since. He is accused of rebellion and sedition back in Spain, charges which carry a potential sentence of up to 30 years in jail. Puigdemont is the only candidate for the Catalonian presidency, but the Spanish Constitutional Court declared he cannot lead the region's parliament from abroad without being present. His supporters had argued he could rule from Belgium via video link, something Madrid strongly contested. Catalonia's regional parliament is due to vote for a new president on Tuesday. And that's news and sports, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.